Alright, welcome back to the Supercoach Knife channel. In this video, we're going to preview round 25 of the 2024 NRL Supercoach season. Possibly the biggest uh, weekend in the season, given its head-to-head uh, -head preliminary finals. Um, but also, I guess, the uh, the big story being Nathan Cleary out, um, most likely for the next three weeks, uh, keeping him fit for finals. So I guess in order to help make our decisions, we'll start by having a look at the crowd and what they've decided collectively. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we look at all coaches, round ownership change, uh, you'll see the most popular trading option this week is DCE. Uh, and I guess in terms of a uh, favourable matchup this week, it doesn't get much nicer than... Um, the Tigers, um, albeit it is at Leichhardt, so the Tigers generally do go to another level at Leichhardt. And I guess because I was a bit, uh, you know, vexed on the decision myself, um, for the first time in a long time, I actually did some research. And um, I say I did research. I watched a few podcasts where other people do the research. Um, and one of them came up with a stat about how halfbacks don't traditionally score well at Leichhardt. Um, so there's that to factor in, but I guess, you know, if you are just having to throw out the stumps to get through to your finals next week, um, I know I'm definitely in a situation like that where winner and runner up get paid. So as long as I win this week, uh, you know, the rest is just gravy. Uh, um, so DC is a viable option. Uh, the next one would be Sam Walker, number two. Again, a favourable matchup against the Titans on a Sunday afternoon up there at the Goldie. Um, I guess, you know, in terms of the ceiling, he offers that. Um, does have a slightly lower floor, but I guess the goal kicking is the ace up his sleeve as well when we look at the other contenders for, for trading in this week. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in the halves, that is, obviously. Um, Jerome Lua at number three, so, you know, like-for-like like replacement, Penrith halfback with, well, I'm not sure if he's playing halfback, but the dominant half, you'd imagine. Uh, in saying that, he is partnered with Brad Schneider as opposed to Jack Cole, so slowly better scoring with Jack Cole where he really had to stand up. Um, you know, with Schneider, he can do a lot of the, the game management stuff, so maybe Lua gets a few less touches in that situation. But the dual position is also nice if you want to have a bit of freedom, you know, play him this week, and then maybe Nico Hines gets up next week and you can, you know, go that super pod uh, if you've got that many trades left. Uh, Jerome Hughes, so probably the next most popular option after Cleary at 23.8%. So slightly less favoured. Um, his scores have been a little bit uh, down. Um, with Munster back, but they have been super consistent. I think it's about four sixties in a row. So if you're just looking to lock in a solid base, sixty points, you know, and and you know go for upside elsewhere, then uh, Jerome Hughes isn't the worst shout. Um, after that, we've got Dom Young, James Tedesco. So again, a couple of assets against the Titans, looking for upside there. Tom Travojevic, I guess, you know, copy and paste what we said for DCE, but uh, we all know this man's ceiling. Uh, Matt Burton at number eight, so another potential halfback option. Um, probably a bit of a tougher matchup against the Warriors. You know, last game at uh, Sean Johnson Stadium this weekend for, for SJ, the super coach legend uh, and Warriors legend, football, rugby league legend. Um so I don't know if Bert will have it all his own way, but, you know, I've had him in my team most of the year. Um, you know, he does offer that that point of difference where he does things that not many others can do. But uh, it's definitely, you know, there's the risk and reward in that pick. Uh, and then the next two or three we'll talk about, Jacob Kira, Zach Lomax, and Dylan Edwards just outside the edge of the, the 10. But... Um, 
Kira's Lomax, both, you know, obviously great upgrades in your center wing if you're using some of that Nathan Cleary money. Uh, and Dylan Edwards, you know, a bit of a differential fullback, you know, a lot of people sort of going towards Teddy Turbo. But uh, with Cleary out, he usually kicks goals, which is a nice little bonus. Um, and just seems to get more involved. So, you know, it does score well, but uh, I haven't got the trades. And I've got Teddy and Turbo already, so not looking at a fullback for myself. Uh, on the trade outs, number one, obvious trade out, <laughs> enough said. Number two, Scott Drinkwater, and number three, Val Holmes, both on the buy. Um, I guess, you know, probably Scott Drinkwater, given he plays fullback, is one that you don't want to leave blank this week if uh, you're in the head to head stuff. Um, Val Holmes is a bit more of a contentious one, given that, you know, he is a keeper in the centre wing. Um, there is plenty of great options. You know, we just saw three options with Young, Kiraz, Lomax. But I think if you've got Holmes, you try to hold him for next weekend in the GF. He could, you know, I guess he's only dropping 1% of players out of 30%. Um, and I guess if we sort of filtered into the top, sort of percentages of players, um, you might find that's even, you know, a lesser amount of trades there. Uh, Cody Walker out this week, so I guess, you know, if you're scrambling for numbers, you can uh, switch him out there. Ethan Strange, very similar sort of case out this week. Not sure on the long-term prognosis. They say he should be back next week or the week after. So, again, can probably trade him out. He's averaging 50 it's not worth hanging on to. Um, Blaze Talungi, I suppose if you're upgrading to a keeper, he is one that can go. But, you know, last week was an absolute, you know, <laughs> I was going to say uh, quagmire. I think that might be the right word to describe it. Um, there against the Roosters, you know, the Broncos haven't been as solid defensively. Coming off the bye, they might have copped a bit of a, a flogging at training and, might see a bit more defensive effort, but without Walsh, without Haas, um, you know, it could be a game where the Eels, you know, spring a surprise, trying to get themselves away from a potential spoon. Reuben Cotter on the buy, I guess, yep, if you wanted to upgrade him to a keeper, now's the time. You know, I guess if you've got other things to worry about in your halves, your, your fullbacks, your centre wings, I'd probably go there first, but... Nice luxury trade out there. Um, K.O. Eero's back this week. Um, so I'd almost suggest holding. Um, obviously, if you want one of those elite guys that were in the top 10 before, because uh, you haven't got them yet, fair enough. Uh, Reese Walsh out injured potentially for the rest of the year. So, yep, get rid of him. Robson on the buy. Again, a tricky one. Um I guess if you're upgrading to Damien Cook or the other one that I saw from, again, doing a bit of research this week, which was quite surprising, Jacob Little, um, which I guess when I thought it, heard it and then I thought about it, plays for fun. He loves an 80-minute hooker. And he's he sort of, you know, had that reputation about him, just probably hasn't had the opportunity. Um, so, yeah, he could be a really interesting point of difference. So I don't hate it, but I guess if you've got him and you've got Connor Watson... You know, you've got to trade one this week. Um, could potentially lean towards trading Robson. I think, you know, Watson does offer a bit more upside. Um, but uh, he's out with concussion this week. So some people trading him out as well. Uh, Fanu, I guess, yeah, people just upgrading him, which is fair enough. You know, he's done his job for us. But again, you, you've got not much better things to do if you're trading him out. And uh, Dean, I can just see there down the bottom on the buy. I think, yeah, if you, you want a playing half this week, yeah, you could trade the in out as well. Um, so for the captaincy, I will switch it up to the top 10%. You know, they're probably the people that are still most likely to be playing for reals. Uh, most popular captaincy option this week, James Tedesco at 40%. So I guess Tommy Turbo at number two. So interestingly, a lot of people go on the straight captain. Um, I was thinking of the insurance of using the loophole this week, but um, I'll have to have a look at my auto emergency situation as well in making that decision. 
After that, Kalen Ponga, I suppose if you stick and fat with him, makes sense. South haven't been the strongest defence this year. Uh, could be a chance. Dom Young, I guess, you know, if you're sort of going turbo into someone, he could be worth a look. Sam Walker, I guess, yeah, if you bring, particularly if you're bringing him in this week and you think he's going to go off, could be worth the, uh, the play. Well, get back to that later. Um, uh, Jerome Hughes, I suppose if he's the other halfback, makes sense. A few people still haven't got out of clear yet, but I'm sure that'll fix up over the next uh, five hours or so, or a couple of days, I suppose, depending on the move. Uh, Zach Lomax, Jacob Kiraz, so again, that sort of upside option at uh, centre wing. And Dave Fafita, Joey Manu, sneaky little mention there as well. Uh, we're outside 1% there. That's really uh, pod territory. Uh, in terms of the VC, Ruben Garrick is an interesting one. Obviously, you know, if Turbo and DC are putting on and scoring the tries. Ruben Garrick's kicking the goals. So uh, could be one if you wanted to, you know, go into a Tedesco or something like that. A nice, interesting VC option. Tommy Turbo at number two. So for those that are, you know, Go on the captaincy later, playing the loophole option, DC, you know, copy and paste. Uh, Jerome Hughes is an interestingly popular VC option. I'm guessing a lot of that would be Hughes into Tedesco. Uh, Nathan Cleary, again, people like me who just haven't changed their trades yet. Um, Sam Walker, I guess if you're VCing him, you, you're running out of options for the the captain in that last game, I guess, what's it, Sharks and the Dragons. So, yeah, don't know who you're captaining there, but I guess that might just be the VC for if you captain Turbo and, you know, he, he pulls up lame in the warm-up or something. Olakuatu plays in the first game, could score a try or two, don't hate it. Kiraz plays pretty early, second game of the round. So if you wanted to flirt with him, you could. Uh, and Damien Cook, you know, does have the capability to go big. Um, Dom Young, you know, we know what he's capable of. But again, pretty late for a VC in the round. Jerome Luai, I guess if you're backing him in to sort of replace Cleary uh, for points as well as, uh, you know, that dominant half, then perhaps. <laughs> Uh, so what does this mean for my team? So as I said, I was fairly confused about uh, what to do with Cleary. Um, you know, looking at my opposition this week in the head-to-head, -head, they've all got Hughes, but, you know, I guess I could try and match, uh, but then, you know, they might make some other trades, which, you know, would then make me a little bit nervous. Um, so what I thought was, I'm just going to pick the players that I think will, you know, do the best this week. Um, go with my gut, because I guess that's always the thing. You're always more disappointed if you have a gut feeling, and then you go against it, and it pays off. If you go with your gut and it doesn't work out, you can say, well, it wasn't meant to be. So for that reason, I'm going with Sam Walker. I just think, you know, he has that ceiling. It could be a good, you know, outcome against the Titans this week. Um, so much so that I'm doubling down. So I'm going to use my second trade. I had sort of thought about, you know, Gray's got a tough draw. I could bring in, like, you know, could just switch it around and bring in Hughes as well, bring in Luai, you know, those sort of picks. But I think the player I'm most scared of not having, given that it's so late in the season, uh, and I am predicting a big one from the Roosters, is Dom Young. So... I have uh, shit on him a bit this season in uh, in uh, some of my analysis, just with the inconsistency. But, uh, you know, this is the time where you want to risk it for the biscuit. So I'm pretty sure in my big cash league, my opponent has Dom Young. So he's the one I'm most worried about getting away from me in terms of the score. So those are my trades. I've got one trade next week, which could be very handy. Um, but, you know, it's probably mostly to cover injuries. Not, you know, I'm not disappointed with my squad by any stretch. I'm pretty happy with it. But I guess, you know, when you look at the, the matchups, in fact, we can't even have a bit of a look. Um, 
Yeah, we'll, we'll sort of touch on all the preliminary finals before we, we wrap up the video, so this might go a little bit longer. But uh, I guess this is the league that I'm worried about the most. The big cash is on the line. <laughs> so you can see my opponent has the likes of uh, Brian Toto, Damien Cook, um, Eero I could cover if I needed to. Um, but I guess, you know, they're probably the, the two. And I've sort of, you know, been okay with Toto. You know, been okay with Cook. Um, I thought he had Young. Maybe he doesn't. Well, maybe I don't need to be so worried about Young. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to have him in. So he does have Cleary, Walker, Val Holmes. So I think that's what I was worried about is he trading out Holmes and Cleary. I thought, you know, they're the two that I'm scared of him bringing in. Um, and then he's also got Jerome Hughes that was sitting on the bench. So... You know, he does have the cover for the third, so like Cody Walker or whoever. Um, so it has a pretty strong team. I'm pretty sure he's got trades up the sleeve. So I'm trying to guess and predict what he's going to do. Um, not that I know the lad too well. Um, <laughs> I do know him from years back, but uh, good luck this week, Nick, is all I can say. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, I guess, the thinking of why I brought in those guys. But as I said, we probably should have a look at the preliminary... Final head-to-heads. I can't really comment on trades and stuff. I haven't done any analysis around that. So minor league, I do not care about. But good luck to you this weekend, Jaden. <laughs> but uh, the first league, we've got uh, Canberra Milk against Lane's Train. So looking, got DC and Garrick. So, you know, some some VC options there. I neither have Tom Travoyevich, which is interesting. I wonder if one of them ends up in in their team this week. Both had Cleary, so there's definitely, you know, the trades are on the on the table. But uh, I guess with Jerome Hughes to cover, you set there. Reese, uh, DCE, of course, for, for Lance Train. Um, but, uh, yeah, three of the, the Roosters, so... You know, I guess based on the fact I'm going all in on them, I'm uh, back in race to get the, the cash this weekend. But pretty strong teams again. You know, these differentials are all very, very close. And I think, you know, once the teams are pieced together properly with, you know, the players that will come in to the squad, like, you know, Cleary and Robson missing here, for example, um, that uh, projected score will come much closer together. In the other half, we've got Shoab and uh, Griffin Meme, so Justin's team. Good to see a couple of guys that are involved in a lot of the other stuff uh, representing here in the final four. Um, both got Turbo, which is nice. So Ponga against Tedesco, that could be the difference maker there. Um, although I do like Jai Gray. Um, he, I'm not sure if he's going to end up in my team or not this week. But uh, we'll find out very shortly. <laughs> um, yeah, they're all matching, so that doesn't really matter. But again, both got Cleary and Holmes to cover. Plus, uh, Justin's also got Cody Walker to cover, but he does have Hughes. does have Jacob Little. As I said, I'd do rate as an option in Hero. Can come back in. So that's a pretty close one. I think, again, just... I think I'm just going off who's got the most roosters, if I'm being honest. So, uh, Justin, so first versus second, I think, would be fair in that league. Uh, second league, let's go. Takes a little while to load. So, up against the, the blank wall this week. But uh, Team Rob and obviously Oblivious head to head. So, it looks like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Team Rob's got a bit less to cover. <laughs> um, Dane Laurie, is, is he getting a run this week? I'm not too sure. I don't remember team lists. But um, he could pop up somewhere. Um, yeah, so covering Holmes and Robson by looks of it, and Walker. So they both got Cleary and Holmes to cover, although Cody Walker was unused last week for Team Rob. Um but uh, it does have a Sarko that can cover, um, which is Handy or Mazu. So Mulatalo, you know, could be a, a spicy pod in that last game. 
So I guess, you know, maybe just looking to cover up uh, a couple of those options should be all right. If, again, assuming they've got trades, I've got no idea. And the other one, we've got short dropout and the Shermanators. So I don't, actually, I didn't predict who I thought would win that one. I'll go back. So I guess, assuming the trades, I do like the Walker and Young setup. So uh, I think Dave might be able to crack a win there. Uh, Shermanators and short dropout. Um, so Teddy and Turbo combo, I do like that, Matthew. Um, Ponga and Teddy, so both got Teddy, um, yeah, both had clear, I think most people had clear at this point, both had uh, Val Holmes to cover, so I guess the difference with this one was the uh, the Martin captaincy option there, so I guess taking the, the VC on Tedesco perhaps is what's happened there. Um, uh, so there is the other halfback. So Hughes and don't know. Oh, Dylan Brown. I I don't hate Dylan Brown against the Broncos. Sort of in line with what we talked about. Um, was it talking about Dylan Brown? I can't think. <laughs> but I don't. Oh, talking about Talangi. That's right. You know, I don't think it's the worst matchup against the Broncos. So definitely could play him this week uh, comfortably if out of trades. Um. But again, the the Tede oh they both got Tedesco, you know, Angus Crichton. I'm not including in that sort of upside factor. So I think maybe the Tom Trevojevic advantage at uh, you know against the Tigers. So I'll go Matthew with that one. Uh, league number three. Let's have a look. So failing big and keggers in the first preliminary final. So, you know, pretty evenly matched. They both got Turbo, both got Oluquatu, Garrick, Tedesco, Young, Crichton, Fafina. So both trying to cover Cleary and Holmes. I guess uh, Michael trying to cover Cody Walker potentially as well. So... You know, there's, yeah, so this one's probably the most interesting one. Um, got Jerome Hughes's cover in the halves. Where's the halves cover here? Oh, I got Jerome Hughes as well. So they match there. Um, yeah, so I guess maybe something like the Zach Lomax factor. Um, you know, if Michael doesn't cover that. Might have to just give it to, to Keggers, I think. And it's going to come down to that last game. So that's pretty, I think that's a pretty exciting one to look at. Uh, the other half, we've got Shake and Bake against Goodbye. Um, again, looks like they're pretty evenly matched on the, the Eagles and the Roosters assets, which we like to see. Um, so Sam Walker in for Shake and Bake. I think that uh, slightly gives advantage there. So we're trying to cover Holmes and Robson and Lukey on top of Cleary is a bit tougher. Uh, Payne Haas as well is not much use at the moment, but does have a Sarko Mazu. Even Kai Pierce Paul and Fermor could do a job this week to cover for Lukey. So not in the worst position. Again, it depends on trades, but like I said, I'm, I'm back in Sam Walker in, so uh, yeah, Shake and Bake has got it for me. I <laughs> uh, just thought about the draft too, so we'll quickly cover off that. Uh, preview the, uh, is it just one preliminary final or two? I've got no recollection of what's going on. I oh, know that's right, it's two versus three. So Lane's Trains and Mrs. Fittler. So Mrs. Fittler with DC tonight is it very interesting. Also Galvin and, and Jakey. So off to a fast start there. You know, for, for the Warriors, you know, SJ, I hope he has a big one in his final game over there at uh, Sean Johnson Stadium. Paddy Carrigan's going to be solid. In saying that, I do also hope Carouse and Crichton have massive games over there in New Zealand. 
uh, you know, like Max Plath, Eli Katoa. So definitely two teams that have drafted a lot better than I did. Um, although I got unlucky with Cleary. That's my uh, story. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Tyo, uh, Angus Crichton as captain, Swalee, Dom Young, you know, who I'd be very tempted to keep the C on. Um, looks like maybe a, a center wing down, maybe Dom Young out of the flex and Kai Pierce Paul comes in, maybe Luke Keery, not that he's, yeah, Trishan does a lot, but uh, could be his week against the Titans. Or Tristan Saylor, perhaps, playing fullback. So definitely options there. Um, I guess, like, looking at the projected, and this might be just off the back, I don't know. Angus Crichton's doing pretty well. I think Gutho's 116's a bit uh, ex extravagant there. But uh, I'm going to go with the, the projections and back Mrs. Fiddler, uh, Katrina, to get up this week in the draft. Uh, that's too far back. just need to go to the Classic. Um, so I don't know if I've done it yet. I think I've, I've told you what my trades are. Yeah. So I've done the trades. And Walker in. Um, that's right. And I got off on a tangent looking at head-to-heads. We went through all of them. <laughs> um, so the captaincy, vice captaincy this week. So I think, you know, Tom Travojevic, I'll back in as VC. Um, you know, just looking through my team, um, you know, the, any of these guys I think can do a decent job. You know, I'm not expecting another 16 from Tulangi. Um, you know, my forwards, Marnie hasn't been great of late, but again, big forward pack there at the Warriors, so there could be a bit of defensive work in the middle for him. Um, Joshy Curran's playing, at least we think so. Max King is lurking, but um, I think even if King comes back in, Curran just slots on the bench and, you know, plays that sort of uh, minute, big minute role in the middle. Um, but it's not as extensive as what it has been. Uh, Fano, you know, I think he can bounce back tonight. Playing at Leichhardt, the Tigers lift. So I think I'm going to be pretty comfortable with playing the loophole. Um, and I guess, you know, it's just going to have to be a decision tonight because I, if I need to, I need to... I could move Martin into my second row, I suppose, through Curran. Um, but, yeah, obviously I'll have a good look tonight and... I think anything over 100, I'll just take from Turbo. I'm not expecting, you know, a massive VC score. Uh, mostly because I'm not too comfortable with, you know, the backup option. It would be Tedesco, but you can't captain the same position, which isn't ideal. Um, it does make me think maybe we go the Garrick play. So Garrick into Teddy as captain. I'd probably be a lot more comfortable with that. Because like, I bought in Walker and Young, and they can go big, but they also have a floor. So I'm a little bit scared off by that. So that's, I guess, the, the big decision is, do we risk the, the VC on Turbo? Or do we Captain Teddy? And I've only got five hours to make that decision at the time of recording. So... Noah Blake against the Bulldogs. Can we rely on him to get some some big ups in? Yeah, so I guess, you know, when the money's on the line, the pressure's on, I'm, I'm cracking. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but you know what? Actually, I think I think this will be the point of difference play. Ruben Garrick is VC, you know, because I think Teddy can match whatever Turbo does. You know, even if it's close to 200 mil, then so be it. But Teddy's got a big one in him too. So I'm more comfortable with this, I think. Um, but, yeah, definitely, you know, the four starters there. You know, like, comfortable with the, that forward pack. It, it probably just comes down to the harms and whether I jump off and get on an hero Something like that. So, I don't mind Gray's matchup against the Knights. 
So I'm happy to keep him in there. I mean, yeah, as, as much as the Warriors are up, I am still back in the dogs to win tomorrow night. So I think Burton will be a, a good part of that. Dylan Brown against the Broncos. As I said, I expect Brown to bounce back too. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it as is. Don't need to overthink it. Spent enough time thinking about it this week, as I said, actually doing some research. So that's how you know the stakes are on the line. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's go with this setup, lock it in, get the video out, and uh, get some feedback. So if you do have anything for me, please feel free to get it in the comment section below this video. For those of you that are out of trades and looking for something to do, the uh, NFL Sports Deck Dream Team. There's still a few spots there. Link will be in the description. But as always, give us a like if you enjoy the NRL Super Coach content. Subscribe for all the fantasy sports content on the channel. Other than that, we'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.